Good morning and welcome. Today, 275 of Bible in a Year. As uh, My name is Pastor Jay Lutz, and I'm going to be taking you through uh, the breakdown of the Bible uh, in 365 days uh, as we're going through the Holy Bible, the New International Version. Um, why? Because it is the greatest story ever told. It's the greatest love story between God and God's people. This is a story um, with, with many... Um, twists and plots, uh, 66 books in all, um, and I'll also be reading some extra books too, and from the Apocrypha that go in between the Testaments, um, uh, they might call that intertestamental, um, or deuterocanonical, or the Apocrypha, um, anyways, but uh, today we're, we'll be reading Nehemiah chapters 6 and 7, and Proverbs chapter 21 verses 1 to 4. Uh, a little bit of a reflection on each of the word. In Nehemiah 7, we see the list of returned exiles. Every person is a part of the story. So are we. Nehemiah 6, we see a plot against the prophets by his enemies, Sanballat and Geshem. Ask him to meet in a village, but Nehemiah says he's doing important work. It cannot come. People can attempt to get us to stop doing God's will for us, but we can respond like Nehemiah and keep to the important tasks that God has given us. Humans work as... Dignity because it has been made in because we've been made in God's image and his likeness And so we bring something to the divine um, In everything that we do uh, Nehemiah knows that he's been commissioned by God to do this work So he's not distracted or taken away from it. He asks God for his strength and his hand in the matter um, When others try to keep us from doing what God wants us to do we need to turn to him to be our strength in Proverbs chapter 21 verses 1 to 4 Solomon instructs his young counterpoint the ways of of a man. Um, though a man may seem, things might seem right to a man, um, only the Lord knows and can see and direct his path and light the path ahead of him. And so let's read all about this, starting with Nehemiah chapter 6 and 7. Nehemiah chapter 6. When word came to Senbalat, Tobiah, Geshem, the Arab, and the rest of the enemies, that I had rebuilt the wall, and not a gap was left in it, though up to this time I had not set the doors in the gates. Senblat and Geshem sent me this message, Come, let us meet together in one of the villages, on the plain of Ono. But they were scheming to harm me, so I sent messengers to them with this reply, I am carrying on a great project, and cannot go down. Why should the work stop while I leave and go down to you? Four times they sent me the same message, and each time I gave them the same answer. Then the fifth time, Senblat sent his aide to me with the same message, and in his hand was an unsealed letter, in which was written, It is reported amongst the nations, and Geshem says it is true that you and the Jews are plotting to revolt, and therefore you are building the wall. Moreover, according to the reports, you are about to become their king, and have even appointed prophets to make the proclamation about you in Jerusalem. There is a king in Judah. Now this report will come back to the king, so come, let us confer together. I sent him this reply. Nothing like what you have said is happening. You are just making it up out of your head. They were all trying to f frighten us, thinking their hand will go get too weak for the work, and it will not be completed. But I prayed, now strengthen my hands. One day I went to the house of Shemaiah, son of Deliah the son of Mehed, Table, who was shut up in his home. He said, let us meet in the house of God, inside the temple, and let us close the temple doors, because men are coming to kill you. By night they are coming to kill you. But I said, should a man like me run away? Or should one like me go into the temple to save his life? I will not go. I realized that God had not sent him, but that he had prophesied against me, because Tobiah and Senblad had hired him. He had been hired to intimidate me so that I would commit a sin by doing this, and then they would give me a bad name to discredit me. Remember Tobiah and Senblad, O oh my God, because of what they have done. Remember also the prophetess Noadiah and the rest of the prophets who had been trying to intimidate me. So the wall was complete. On the 25th of Elul, 
In 52 days, when all our enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid and lost their self-confidence because they realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. Also in those days, the nobles of Judah were sending many letters to Tobiah and replies from Tobiah keep coming to them. For many in Judah were under oath to him since he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah, son of Era, And his son, Jehohanan, had married the daughter of Meshulam, son of Berechiah. Moreover, they kept reporting to me his good deeds, and then telling him what I had said. And Tobiah sent letters to intimidate me. Chapter 7 After the wall had been re rebuilt and I had set the door in place. The gatekeepers and the singers and the Levites were appointed. I put in charge of Jerusalem my brother Hanani, along with Hanana, Hananiah, the commander of the citadel, because he was a man of integrity and feared God more than most men do. I said to them, The gates of Jerusalem are not to be opened until the sun is hot. While the gatekeepers were still on duty, have them shut up the doors and bar them. Also, appoint residents of Jerusalem as guards, some at their posts and some near their own houses. Now the city was large and spacious, but there were few people in it, and the houses had not yet been built, rebuilt. So my God put into my heart to assemble the nobles, the officials, and the common people for registration by family. I found the genealogical records of those who had been the first to return. This is what I found written there. These are the people of the province who came up from the captivity of the exiles from Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had, take, had taken captive. They returned to Jerusalem and Judah, each to his own town, in company with Zerubbabel, Jeshua, Nehemiah, Azariah, Ramai, Nehemani, Mordecai, Bilshan, Misperath, Bigvai, Nam and Bena, the list of men of Israel, the descendants of Parosh, two thousand one hundred and seventy-two, of Shephatiah, three hundred and seventy-two, of Era, six hundred and fifty-two, of Peath Moab, through the line of Jeshua and Joab, two thousand eight hundred and eighteen, of Elam, one thousand two hundred and fifty-four, of Zeda. 845, of Zakai, 760, of Benuai, 648, of Biba, 628, of Asgad, 2322, of Adonakam, 667, of Bigvi, 2067, of Aden, 655, of Adder, through Hezekiah, 98, of Hashem, 328, of Bezai, 324, of Herif, 112, of Gibeon, 95, the men of Bethlehem and Nedophah, 188, of Anathoth, 128, of Beth Asmaveth, 42, of Kirth Jerem, Kephra and Beeroth, 743, of Rama and Geba, 621, of Michmash, 122, of Bethel and I, 123, of the other Nebo, 52, of the other Elam, 1,254, of Haram, 320, of Jericho, 345, of Lod, Hadad, and Ono, 721, of Sinai, 3,930, the priests, the descendants of Jediah, through the family of Jeshua, 973, of Immer, 1,052, of Pashur, 1,247, of Haram, 1,017, the Levites, the descendants of Jeshua, through Cadmiel, through the line of Hodaviah, Hodaviah, 74, the singers, the descendants of Asaph, 148, the gatekeepers, the descendants of Shulam, Adder, Telmon, Akub, Hat Hatita, and Shobai, 138. The temple servants, the descendants of Ziha, Hashifa, Tabaoth, Kiros, Sia, Padon, Lebanon, 
Hagabah, Shalmai, Hanan, Gedel, Gehar, Ria, Rezin, Nakoda, Gazem, Uza, Pashai, Besai, Munim, Nephisim, Bakbuk, Hakufa, Harhur, Basluth, Mahida, Harsha, Barkos, Sisera, Tima, Neziah, Hatifa, the descendants of the servants of Solomon, the descendants of Sotai, Sophereth, Perida, Jela, Darkon, Gidel, Shephatiah, Hatil, Pokereth, Hazabim, and Amon. In the temple of the servants of the descendants of the servants of Solomon, 392, the following came up from the towns of Telmala, Telharsha, Carib, Adon, and Immer, but they could not show that their families were descendants from Israel. The descendants of Deliah, Tobiah, and Nakoda, 642. And from amongst the priests, the descendants of Hobiah, ha Hakaz, and Barzillai, a man who had been married, a man who had married a daughter of Barzillai, the Gileadite, and was called by that name. These searched for their family records, but they could not find them, so were excluded from the priesthood as unclean. The governor therefore ordered them not to eat any of the most sacred foods until there should be a priest ministering with them with the Urim and Thummim. The whole company numbered 42,360, besides their 7,337 men, men servants and maid servants. They also had 245 men and women singers. There were 736 horses, 245 mules, 435 camels, and 6,720 donkeys. Some of the heads of the families contributed to the work. The governor gave to the treasury 1,000 drachmas of gold, 50 bulls and 530 garments for priests. Some of the heads of the families gave to the treasury for the work 20,000 drachmas of gold and 2,200 minas of silver. The total given by the rest of the people was 20,000 drachmas of gold, 2,000 minas of silver, and 67 garments for priests. The priests, the Levites, the gatekeepers, the singers, and the temple servants, along with certain of the people and the rest of the Israelites, settled in their own towns. When the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled in their town, all the people assembled as one man before the before the water gates. Here ends our reading. And our second reading comes from Proverbs, chapter 21, verses 1 to 4. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. He directs it like a water course, wherever he pleases. All a man's ways seem right to him, but the Lord weighs the heart. To do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Haughty eyes and a proud heart, the lamp of the wicked, are sin. Here ends our second reading. Um, this is true. As Solomon says, that, that all the ways of man seem right. In our own eyes, we are always, um, we're the savior, we're the, we're the good guy, we're the one that always does right, and um, others may do wrong, but we do right. Um, but as Solomon most wisely states, uh, things are not right unless they're weighed by the Lord. The Lord checks out our hearts. He sees whether there is any proudness um, in and of ourselves, whether, whether we are uh, doing anything that's wicked. Uh, he weighs these things before him. He knows the difference between right and what is just, what is acceptable for the Lord. And uh, doing right is even more acceptable than any sacrifices that we can give. Um, but that the, the Lord is that which directs our path. As it says in the very beginning, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. He directs it like a water course. Uh, God is the one who guides us in the ways of truth. He's the one that puts us in the right paths. Uh, for his namesake, not ours. And so we, uh, that's why we look to the Lord. And like that, we, uh, we, we like can look to others like Nehemiah, who have let God um, 
direct his paths, that he has allowed God uh, to take his life and make it as such. Uh, he's commissioned uh, these things for the Lord. He works for the Lord, and the God, and God in turn, um, has kept him as the, as the Bible says, as an apple of his eye. Uh, that He favors him, and He doesn't let him be overcome by any of the en enemies, whether it be um, Sanballat, Tobiah, or Geshem, or any of these. Um, he thwarts their paths. He he stops them from making any action upon their 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 false and fake words uh, and he comes to the rescue time and time again not only to nehemiah but the people of god and he strengthens them in all that they do and they complete their task as we see in this they've completed their task and now uh, as we go forward we start to see more reforms that will come as time goes on uh, but these are beautiful things when we see that when we uh, as it says in our Proverbs, uh, walk in the ways of God, that God, um, he enlightens our path, he f shows us what's acceptable, he brings us down in our pride and lifts us up um, in our humility uh, in order that we might be made right before him. May you ever be made right before God. And may you ever thank God in praise and thanks uh, every, each and every day. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we give you praise and glory. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you for this opportunity to read through your book, through the word. May we journey through this Bible in a year. And on this day, 275, God, we thank you for your faithfulness. We are not perfect, and yet you are. I thank you for your perseverance uh, and giving us your perfection, that you are faithful beyond all things. We thank you. Please receive our thanks and praise to Jesus our Lord. In this we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. I just ask that you continue to pray for me uh, that I might, like Nehemiah, uh, continue to find the strength um, to commission this work, um, this readings towards God, that God might be all glory and praise, uh, that we always might realize that our all our works are in God's hand and our good ways are all done by God. May we continue to serve God in all his ways to his glory. Jesus name we pray.